Unfortunately, I just um, returned it to the library, so I don't have it with me right now. But a novel I just finished lately is called The Sun Also Rises by Ernest Hemingway. Um, I think it's his first book. I think he may have written something like a bit of a shorter novella, maybe before this or some short stories. But from what I'm aware of, um, The Sun Also Rises is Hemingway's first novel. Um, the reason why I kind of went to read this is because I, one, I feel like I don't really just read a lot of what are kind of considered American classics. I grew up not in the United States, so I did not really have an awareness of uh, the importance of a lot of classics or whatever. I mean, I did read some that are quite popular here. I've read, you know, I did read Catcher in the Rye, which I, you know, I actually did love very much, although my classmates hated it. I love Catcher in the Rye. Um, I did read 1984, and I have read, um, The Kill of Mockingbird, so I guess maybe, I, you know, my school was kind of <laughs> very America-centric, but, um, I didn't read any Hemingway, um, the, the only novel I knew of his was The Old Man and the Sea, and very impulsively, I kind of just thought, well, let me, let me try to read more Hemingway. Um, I have so many books here, really, um, I shouldn't have, honestly, I shouldn't have read Hemingway, because, uh, I think that's easily available where I'm going, um, and I can't. I'm leaving here soon, so I don't really... But whatever. I, so, um, The Sun Also Rises is about a man named... named. It's funny, I, I feel like I, I had just read it, but I completely forgot. Jake Barnes, right? So his name is Jake Barnes, and he is part of this group. He, he the, movie, the, film, the, the film, the book is in his perspective, and he kind of tells the stories of the characters around him um, specifically, this woman named Brett Ashley, Lady Brett Ashley, and the film is about, I mean the film, the movie, the, I keep messing this up, the book is, really it's mostly about his relationship with her, I think. She is this very ravishing woman, very beautiful woman who is at the same time very carefree and is who indulges in a lot of um, hedon hedonistic behavior who cannot seem to commit herself to um, certain men or at least she just feels like she uh, she desires sex in a way that for her and her perspective is so overwhelming that when she feels this desire she needs to acquire it she needs to have it she needs to she's like addicted to love or at least addicted to the prospect of um sex leading to come some kind of intimacy jake barnes on the other hand is someone who loves her very much but not in a sexual way partly because the book doesn't make it very clear, but there are kind of references to him possibly being impotent or just being unable to have um, sexual intercourse, which kind of um, is a bit of a deal breaker for Lady Ashley um, because obviously that is like, she is a woman of um, pleasure seeking. So the, you know, so with that kind of cocktail of sorts, you have um, Jake Barnes watching one by one all his different friends <laughs> kind of um engaging with the relations with um lady ashley and um at the end of everything she always goes back to him because she knows that he she has him under his under her you know under her palm he will do anything for her um and he knows it as well and he lets it happen because he kind of gets something out of being with her that you know, comes from, you know, she, she, they, they acknowledge it over and over again, you know, she, they say, you know, Jake, do you love me? And, she, and he says, yes, I still love you, I still love, you know, and that's kind of it. He, and the, the way the book is written, which I was kind of um, put, I'm um, surprised by while reading it, and it only, you know, I went, when I read more about the history of the novel, and particularly the, the writing style of Ernest Hemingway, I realized that a lot of what was happening was very intentional, where it was, where, where a lot of the book is they called iceberg theory, where uh, only the very, um, only the very, um, it's like people, everything's just being descri described in a very shallow way. 
um, and there is no kind of very there's no deep introspection by the characters by the protagonists by the people there it's very much like I woke up and then I had um, a croissant for breakfast or something and I um, saw this girl and this girl went left and then went to the bathroom and it's like it's very descriptive in a very um, clinical way uh, I think the theory behind the iceberg uh, the writing style of Hemingway is that he felt like it was wrong to be so explicit about motivations and inter and, and feelings and all of this and that he was trying to kind of have this very strong very simplest sim this simplicity to his writing in where in which um uh, the less he's able to kind of put out and still be and the, the less is more for him like um, he believed that all the things underneath can be expressed can be figured out can be known just through um, hearing the surface level things and I think it comes from a very strong sense of I think hearing I think like I understand it very well when I I try to write some things, and sometimes I try to write screenplays or something, or dialogue. I'm very interested in dialogue, and I realize that, you know, when the way people actually converse in real life is not in a... This, it's not like how they do with the books. Not not at all. People like, especially now with the digital age, with the social media, and the kind of the shortening of messages and um, abbreviations through chat, people speak in a very surface-level way most of the time. And the most and the, I guess a lot of the issues right now with social media and communication online is that there's an expectation that the other person has to kind of understand their deeper meaning behind the shallow kind of conversation. It's kind of a new issue right now, but it, but um, Hemingway kind of engages with it in the twenties, um, where he trusts the audience to be able to kind of pick up social cues and in the most striking of sequences towards the end of the book, after like one of the many um heartbreaks, you know of. Of Jake Barnes he is finally alone after all this kind of the, the story the main plot is that they all go to Spain to kind of like him and a couple friends with Lady Ashley they all go to Spain in order to see this like bullfight in Pomplona it's kind of festival like a bull festival or something in a small town over there and at the, near the end of the novel he's finally alone and he decides to kind of book to go to this like other kind of seaside area and he just wanted to be alone and he describes being alone and his like day to day life very 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 clinically, to the point that it's so hard not to like you know, to, to a certain degree I got used to reading it, reading the novel and um picking up all the things. But at the end of the novel, it was so like, <coughs> it was so stark how clinical the descriptions of the everyday life was that um it was impossible really to um not notice. And when you kind of read it in that way. It feels you. It's such. It's so unique, and that it really comes across how detached the main character feels, just by the way he describes things around him. In a way that it's like um. It's just I thought it was quite remarkable that I felt so strongly about these very mundane descriptions because, I could feel the banality and the, I could feel the, um, detachment from reality that he was kind of experiencing when he kind of lost his inner monologue. Um, and yeah, the, the, I, I think it's a fantastic book and, you know, I'm very interested in this kind of minimalistic writing. I, I think from what I understand, he was very inspired by Ezra Pound. Um, and I'm recently trying to read more about the Beat Generation and, you know, Ginsberg and all of these people who I think may have been influenced by this kind of lost generation of sorts in the early 20s. But anyway, um, I think it's a great novel and if you have kind of some free time, it's quite short, um... If you try to be open minded about its writing style, I think you would I think you will enjoy it. It doesn't kind of end very concretely. Um it doesn't close off like a you know, like a Hollywood movie, but it's it's very moving, I think, and it the characters that they that kind of fill the pages of the novel are so rich so richly um detailed, it feels like they're real people. Apparently it's actually they are real people. <laughs> Henry was writing about real people at the time and it would cause controversy and all this stuff in Paris, but anyway, great novel, I highly recommend reading it.